Uh, my name is Will. I'm from Hazelbrook. Okay, my name's Anita, and I'm from the Bigger Valley. Um, I know about rocket stoves, and we use a rocket stove. Um, but I wanted to take you to the next step for the thermal mass heater. Yes. And we don't have a house. I mean, we rent a house. Yes. And we want to build a house. And I only want to build one house ever. And I want all the things in it that I want it to have. Yeah. And this is the first step. So we're still going to have, we're going to still have this J, which is called the J tube. We're still going to have that, but instead of using a barrel, it's the whole thing is going to be encased in brick. And there's going to be a bench. chimney comes down and sits about a hundred mil off the floor and what happens is the same thing is that the heat comes up here it starts to cool goes into this bench and this is and this is where you have what's called stratification. So the hot air rises and the cool air sinks. So the hot air gets trapped in here, it has nowhere to go. But as it starts to get cool in the bottom of here, it'll start to get sucked up the chimney and only cool air will run out. And again this draft, because this is made of metal is created up here by this heat that's at the very top of the chain helping the cool air get sucked out hey welcome and thanks for tuning in to my video my name is Dan and this is just a video about my build of my rocket mass heater really and um, yeah we did it over we did a workshop over a few days over two and a half days we've got the majority of the main structure built and then after that I spent nearly another month plastering, rebuilding, taking down, rebuilding things I wasn't happy with, trying it out and yeah basically just sort of changing stuff until I was really happy before I rendered it. So in this first part of the video we're laying down some fibre cement sheeting and the reason I'm doing that is because it's on quite an old slab that the, and I don't believe it's reinforced slab and it's got movement in it, it's got cracks in it and I'm worried that as it cracks, expands and contracts it'll rip apart my new brickwork that's going on top. So I'm putting it on top of this fibre cement board uh, in the hope that any contraction and expansion will happen underneath that board and we'll leave the brickwork untouched. Okay, so Dan, just describe what's happening in this process at the moment. Okay, so Will's making um, a clay sand mortar using three parts unwashed bricky sand, so it's the type of sand that you use for making um, cement to one part clay. And he's just going to keep doing that. Get in there. There's knives in my toolbox and stuff on them. I want the other two boxes in the okay. Yeah, so he's just going to do three to one, three to one, three to one, rather than nine and then three and five. So I just go three one, well, three one, three one. So you, it's kind of roughly mixed in the bucket before before you start to mix it. And then we're just going to add some water until it. We're kind of 
want a doughy type yeah. consistency. So what I find is, does it do when you're doing the three to one as opposed to just kind of randomly just chucking stuff this in? This makes it much easier to mix if you haven't yep. got a cement mixer. We're not using cement mixer. Yep. Because we we're not using a massive amount of this stuff. So, um, the nice thing about using clay sand compared to using refractory cement, which is the other alternative, normal cement isn't going to work. And this normal cement would actually explode. It would certainly crack. Um, is that it takes a really long time to dry. In fact, you, you dry it out with the heat of the fire, um, where refractory cement has a chemical in it and it sets really quickly. So we've got a better working time with this. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So we've, got, we've got more time, so it's easier for beginners. Yes. So while um, that's happening in there, what's uh, currently happening in here? So we're just we're just going to lay out first course of bricks and uh, probably just gonna lay this out, eyeball it, make sure it's make sure everything all fits in and then um, take it away and I might even draw around it and then and then get a cement uh, roll that mortar layer all the way around. So we're gonna make this a bit bigger. Uh, then what's on the plans? Yeah, then what's on the plans? Because I want to be able to make this yeah, into a, down. A, this a, this a bed area yep. and um, not have the mattress too close to the manifold in case. So I've just paused it here because I've said the wrong thing. I've said close to the manifold and I should really be referring to this this rectangle sort of tower that we're going to build in the end as a bell. Now the bottom part of it is the manifold, that is actually true, but the top part of it's the bell. It can get quite confusing. I ended up not actually doing what I said because we decided that we actually wanted to be able to sit up against the bell, rest against the bell, and it was too hot to do that. So I ended up building another brick wall in it, which you'll probably see a bit later on, um, allowing me to be able to sit against it and it remain at a nice temperature and uh, yeah, be able to have a mattress on it like I'm talking about, being able to do the bed. And that can go right up to the bell now and it really doesn't get that hot. So we don't, we're not gonna have to pull it away when we go out and stuff like that, which some people have to do because, because the side of the heater is just too hot for it to handle. This manifold's high and it gets too hot. Uh, I just want to have a, a thermal break. I'll just have some bricks or something that you can use to rest drinks on. Yep. Oh, that way. Mm. That one's going to be done? Yep. That's marked. It is. Do you want to do that one, Alan? Um, mm -hmm. Mine might not be big enough. Do Right, we're doing a lot of bricklaying. Bricklaying, bricklaying, more bricklaying, bricklaying, and more bricklaying. So we've, we've got the first course of bricks in, which has taken a really long time. I knew it was going to be the longest thing, uh, but it's done. So now, hopefully, we're going to get a bit of a wriggle on. Okay, so um, um, we're about halfway through uh, day one of actually getting the build together. What's been the key learnings for you so far that maybe you hadn't anticipated or, or some of the things that you were expecting that have uh, come about? Um, I think that the main thing that I've learned is how much preparation you need 
to go because I'm I love launching into things, but <laughs> then don't do the right preparation. And then, you know, what steps are actually critical within each step? Uh -huh. So. Yeah. Cool. My name is Martine and um, I'm a teacher, but um, I'll be retiring in a couple of years time. And I'm interested in uh, moving to a rural location. So I'm just developing skills, um, like I've just learned how to grow mushrooms and <laughs> I'm enjoying doing things like that. So it's quite a cold place where I'm moving to. And so I liked the look of, of getting, getting up, having had fires before and they go out overnight and this one you get up in the morning and you've got a warm place to sit yeah that's very attractive for that reason and also it's carbon neutral yes so you're just burning uh, bits of wood that fall off trees etc mm -hmm. yes yes yeah. so what's uh, would you say that's the most advantageous thing about this particular um fire place I that think, yeah. draws you to it or i think it's just a very it's a clever design yeah and um i'm intrigued by it mm. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. I'll just go and trim this a bit more. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Just to explain how I'm going to be cutting all the stonework for this project, I'm using a combination of a circular saw and a table saw. Both of those I've installed diamond blades on, which you can get from any hardware store. Even though these are you know, generally wood cutting devices, you can, you can cut stone with them as long as you go really easy. Ideally you'd get a brick saw, which is a wet cutting saw. You attach a hose, it doesn't create any dust. This is very dusty. So if you're going to be doing this all the time, I'd, I'd certainly get a, uh, a wet saw, but for just doing a few cuts, this is fine. Here, me and Will are just building this sort of cross section of brick that goes along the bottom of the manifold. This is where the bell, this will be the end of the bell and the start of the bench. And the reason that the brick is going to be across the floor area is that to the left behind me is where the burn chamber and everything will be and the ash will all settle so the brick is actually just to stop the ash from entering into the the bench which is the right hand side We are in uh, day two. Do you want to leave or do you want me to ask the questions to these guys first? I'll ask them and then you can fill it. Okay, so we're in day two. Um, 
as with these kind of projects, we're slightly behind where we were aiming to be at the end of yesterday. How are we feeling about the project at the moment? And oh, quite the confidence. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm enjoying, you know, our learning the skills and yeah. like coming back the second day and feeling more confident and yes. thinking, yeah, you know, I can do this kind of. Yeah, it helps. Like, because uh, do you like no pun intended, but now that the foundations are in place, that's kind of where we're at, mm. isn't it? And we can kind of get an idea of the plan that. Dan had shown us and yeah. how it's going to look, and we're starting to see it physically transform. Um, what kind of uh, things from yesterday do you think that would help, that you learned from yesterday, that would help us today in particular? Hmm. Um, oh, well, just you know, lining things up and using the spirit level and yeah. getting, it, you know, getting it right each step of the way. So yep. That, to avert any potential disasters. <laughs> yes, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so as far as today's concerns, uh, we're going to finish this. going to get it cracked on, isn't it? Yeah, so at the end of today, what we want to, where we want to be is where we can fire it up. It's not going to be um, aesthetically finished, perfect. There's going to be granite on the top, which is outside. And that's something I'm just going to do by myself. I'll probably call on you to come and ask you to look like 200 kilo slab. Uh, <laughs> no we might have to get three people to do it. Yeah, that. yeah, that's fine. That's Don't fine. worry, we'll yeah. get, we'll get um, <laughs> somebody else to come and do it as well. Um, but we will fire this thing today. Yep, um, ready to roll. Cool. Uh, all right. So I'm just going to pop out here, get some words from... Right. You're pretty wet there, yeah. Well. Mix from the other side, right? It's designed to mix from there. It's not designed to mix from the other side. Right? How are you going, sir? Morning. Good. Get stuck into it, I see. Yeah, good old mixing. <laughs> Fully prepared for the day ahead. Huh? Fully prepared for the day ahead. Yeah. Lots to crack through. So, um, I've just uh, said the same thing to the guys inside. Um, what do you think is going to be the key thing about today to try and kind of bring us back on track and get us get us to our end goal? And uh, well, I'm going to take over that. That's all right. So we need to get we need a, another batch of the glass. Can you set the yeah. table saw up, please? Sure. And I'll set this. Um, um, Should I talk? I'll oh, follow you, man. You, uh, um, you you're talking off at the same time. So yeah, I think the like the yesterday having. Kind of, we've got the idea of how to do everything. I think, yeah, just kind of keep the momentum. And, um, so that, we'll be doing the, the, basically the same thing. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, just kind of honing our skills a bit. And yep. Yep. We're actually just through the um, majority of this brickwork. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, because you've got everything kind of set up. It's it's just literally, I guess it's a case of just getting into the rhythm of it for today now. Isn't it? Yeah, well, this bench on the right is yeah. the, the, the largest part of the masonry work, and that's we're one course off finishing. Right? Yeah, it's ready. The other side is so we've only got this much square to build up to about a meter, and that's it. So yeah, we, we really have. We are really on the, cool. the home. Home, whatever. Yep. Just, this was a bit dry, so I added water. I've, I've added too much water now, so to adjust it, I'm just going to do it by the handful. Yes. So one part plays three parts sand. And that was, it'll probably take me a couple of goes to get that. Yep. Actually, Sorry. I think I've got it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so we are just about to put the rocket heater core in, and we've just. I'm, I was just a bit concerned that we're a bit close to this wall, so. I'm putting another layer of this insulation board in, which you know can handle the 1,200 degrees. So hopefully, 
between that and the brick we should be able to keep heat out of here. We will lose thermal mass in these. Yeah, we will lose some thermal mass in this. But I'd rather that than the, the wall burn. So. Yes. Uh, I'm hedging my bets. <laughs> okay. So that's in, that's leveled. And now we're just going to fill in with some brick around, around the box. So I'm just going to go cut some bricks and then we'll put that back in. We'll put it in properly. So while I was outside, I was cutting some of this paver as well, so I could make the bridge. And the bridge is what will divide the the bell to the left of the screen and the bench to the right of the screen. Um, but the bridge, which brickwork will go on top of, uh, will allow warm air to travel underneath the bridge and into the bench and, and heat the bench separately. As you can see that top piece broke after I cut it, but uh, it's no big deal. I've just put the, the stronger one on the bottom and the broken one on top. Anita, who's on my left, is putting the bricks around the burn tunnel of the rocket heater core at the moment so that uh, it's filled all the air gap in, there's lots of thermal mass in there and we'll end up by putting the bricks around the top of the, the wood feed to protect the ceramic fiber board and to actually extend the length of the feed tube or the wood feed. Try and match that to a brick height in the next course around. How are you going? Okay, I'm just going to put one more brick there. Mm -hmm. I just moved that out of the way a bit, so you might need to readjust that. Um, and then, yeah, and you'll have to cut some because by the time I have that little bit of mud and stuff, yeah. there's nothing it's left. Really it's a bit. Maybe it's the wall. It's also a government in the corner. Distance, but a symmetrical distance at least. Okay. So, how many of do I need? To Three. Do Three. Okay. Be about 65. So in this shot, you'll see that the pavers have all been laid out on the bench. Now they haven't been modded in yet. Uh, we've just dry fit them and cut that end one, which you can see is much thinner than the rest of them, or narrower rather. And uh, yeah, we're about to, we're about to mortar those in now. Now you'll see here that we are using our a very very thin mix of mortar which we affectionately named baby poo because it was so runny turned out that it slumped a bit afterwards and the pavers on the top weren't level so I had to redo that much later not in the day but um, way later you'll see it in the time lapse down the road so I probably wouldn't do that again it made it quite easy to um, for the sides and I'd certainly maybe do it again for the the sides because what we really need to do is we need a really good seal here on the sides of these pavers because we're talking about gases that could be coming out and we're trying to make an airtight box now negative pressure should pull any smoke emissions uh, gases whatever you want to call them out of the flue even if there was a leak in the system somewhere. And I've also installed a CO meter, carbon monoxide meter, in the, the room. And it hasn't shown any carbon monoxide. And the type of meter I, I bought also records the highest level of carbon monoxide, or it's carbon monoxide that it's registered and it hasn't registered anything. I'm surprised how nice it was cleaning up this stuff compared to cleaning up some air. Mm. It's nice. Going to the shower, 
Wash it off. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. I saw the ECB played it all on top of the roof um, our rooms. Okay. So all these big pillars and spikes hit her on the wall. I need some more, I think. What you'll see here is, is the bell looking a bit shonky. But what we decided to do as we ran out of time was just build the last three quarters up with clay slip and just get it in just so we could give it a test fire, really. I had to take that down after and rebuild it properly. This is Will and I putting on the ceramic fiberboard top that I've pre-cut. I've oversized it because the bell isn't finished properly yet, as I just mentioned. I'll have to cut that down. And um, we're just about to put a big pile of clay around the hole to seal it in. And I put way, way too much on and I actually snapped the ceramic fiber board. Didn't actually snap right at this moment. It just, it snapped over time when I took it off. So I had to make a new one, which was a real pain because they're 80 bucks a sheet and I went through two of those. Okay, someone want to go and check out, check the chimney? I'll do that. See if we're getting a draft. Could you go on the other side? It's all right. It's just a bit wet, you know, and the wood's taking a while, yeah. and I'm wet, and everything's wet. Mm. But it's, it's rough, isn't it? This wood's been but inside for three days. Three days. Oh, yeah, this is You'll see here now that we're just sort of filling up a few holes because there's smoke coming out and it's leaking into the room. Like I said before, this was just a temporary fix. I don't have the ceramic fiber board exposed on the final version, as you'll see. But uh, the workshop attendees really just wanted to see it burn before they left. Hold on. Very satisfying to see it lit and yeah. yeah. Um, any takeaway thoughts? Would you entertain building this kind of thing in your yeah, future abode? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Cool. And how about you? Um, you said you were impressed with the way it draws, and that's what you come to see and mm. to check out. To see it actually working is really amazing. Yeah. And really confirming how awesome it is. And yep. playing with the mud, playing, doing work with the mud and stuff was really satisfying. Yes. And yeah, what a great cool. thing. Yeah. Awesome. And same question, would you entertain buildings? Because I you're talking about having a future project of your housing project of your own, so absolutely would. Sweet. Mm. Nice. That's it, we're in play now. Everybody. So, any final thoughts? Yeah, just satisfied that it's done. Yeah, like it's um, <laughs> pretty. It's pretty cool to see it just running along. Yeah, got all the brick. Got, did it? It's up. Uh, it's uh, it looks just checked. It was running clear. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's great. 
So, uh, casting your mind back to Friday night when you saw the prototype and to now, mm. how would you describe that journey? Um, a lot of mixing and getting the um, <laughs> order. Yeah, just so, yeah, a lot of brick work and yeah. It's, yeah, I, I feel, feel like I've got a bit improved for the, just from a couple of days of doing the buttering. And, cool. Yeah. And um, I know you're not in the same position as the ladies here, but would you ever entertain kind of building something like this down the track? Could, yeah. Have you, um, had the opportunity? Yeah, I've had the opportunity Let's for a yeah. place and building your own. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, definitely at the very least. It needs to be lower. A client or something or yes. someone I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool. Like I can pull it out. Nice. Yeah. As you can see, there's some changes have been made to the rocket heater, and I excuse, it's still a bit of a mess. Uh, I haven't cleaned up 100% because I'm still going to do some changes. I'm really unhappy with the clay tiles that we put on the top. They're really not holding the heat as they should do. They're supposed to hold heat for six to eight hours. Certainly that's what um, the designer has found using flagstones. So I'm gonna change them. I'm gonna put either concrete or limestone on before the granite goes on. And other than that, it heats really well. The other thing with this concrete, this um, clay so is it's too thin. Like sitting here and where this insulation board is, is just too hot. Like it's actually burning your bum. If you sit on a cushion, which I've got there, it's fine. But I've also noticed that it's, um, like I say, it only holds heat for about one to two hours. But if you have a, bl a blanket on it, which I've had on last night, I've come back in the morning and it, it's still a teeny tiny bit warm underneath the blanket, but where it's not, it is totally cold. So the blanket is insulating. 
Now I've got the the ceramic fiber board up against here because I'm running a bit of a test. Uh, I want to run it for uh, probably eight to twelve hours, and um, and I'm going to go to the library today and just borrow the, the they've got infrared thermometers and get some temperatures off this board there and off here, which. Uh, should be the hottest part with the heat from down there and the heat from the bell because I want to fill in the back. I really want to fill in the back. What I'm worried about down here oh, is fine. It's not getting hot at all down there, so we can probably fill that in. At the moment, I've had it running since uh, 9.30, I think. And the top doesn't get particularly hot. There's one, there's just the one hot spot here, which is directly where the uh, riser is. But even, it's it's too hot to, to hold for very long. But not, things are like the woods on here and it's not burning. The orange peel on here. Orange peel makes really good fire lighters, by the way. But you've got to dry it out. Yeah, so I do, I'm just putting kindling on here to, to, to dry it all out. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here now, and because I want to change the top, uh, I used quarter bricks here along to support the ceramic fiber board underneath, and they actually collapsed and just slumped all the mortar. Uh, I got it sealed, but it's totally wonky, so I'm gonna chop that off, and I might take another course off and and um, fix that up. I'm also thinking about, <laughs> this is why I mean I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm thinking about coming up and actually increasing the height of the bell, bell being here, bench being here, bench bell, to probably maybe another meter and um, installing some, I've got these bricks here just as a, as a guide to to, in, to make a box inside with two sections on it, up, you know, so, sort of about this high in, and then encased in the riser to have a wood drying shelf in it so it's got enough so it's got enough wood for maybe four days or something like that so it can get super dry in there before it goes in the heater. I think it'll look quite nice too. This is just a quick video. We're gonna, uh, well, we are. I am. I'm pretty happy with the heater, I've gotta say. Now that the humidity has dropped, it, it was, you know, when we started the build, when I started the build, when we started the build, it was about 90% and it's dropped down to 50. It's been down about as low as 45, but I haven't had the heater running for 24 hours and it's still just under 17 degrees in here. I haven't run it for 24 hours. It's mostly been around 21. Um, I wanted to let it completely cool down so I could do some work on this. Okay, so the plan is over the next few days is to rip this back down to three courses of riser because I'm really unhappy with my last three. Um, I noted in earlier videos as well that when I put the top on, I made some error with making these tiny bricks to try and sort of support the ceramic fiber board in there. And the whole thing just slumped and went sideways. It's patched up and it's fine, but yeah, it's pretty ugly and it's gonna really affect my render. When I put that on my, my plaster course, I'm gonna have to come out really far to, to just to, you know, compensate for my crappy brickwork. So I'm gonna rip those three down and go again. And I'm also gonna come up another five. The reason is so that when you're sitting there, you can lean against there without clipping your head there. I hope you can see that and that makes sense. So I need this bit with the granite capping to be well above clipping your head when you sit back against there. We also are gonna bring this out one more 
uh, row of bricks to reduce this temp with the temperature on here. Again, did I make, I can't remember if I made videos of this with the doing temperature readings. I think I did. But anyway, it, it can get 100 degrees on here and the same around there, maybe slightly lower around there, but certainly up here it's 100 C, which is far too hot to sit on. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to have to make another bridge across here underneath the pavers to support block work along there. I'm just, I've just taken the top off now and uh, I'm just collecting all this old mortar and it's not supposed to be in there, it's supposed to be in there. That's the old sand clay mortar, that's the, the bricks, or half bricks are just going in there, poured bricks. And uh, I'll just soak that again. I'll just reuse that for filling up the cavities and bricks and stuff. I don't know if I want to use it for real mortar again because there's some soot and there's also pieces of ceramic fiberboard stuck on bits. So yeah, I'll just recycle it into brick filler, no problem. I just got all these bricks today, got them for free, got them off Facebook Marketplace and um, I've been laying them all out, I haven't finished laying them all out, I've got another row to do over here, I need about another 150 or something like that and I'm going to fill them with, with um, mortar now rather than trying to do it on the job which is taking a lot of time up. I'm able just to use some old mortar, stuff that's fallen on the floor that I've scraped up, stuff from old bricks I've pulled off, things like that. Whereas it might not be the best to use as mortar, it's perfectly fine for just filling these holes. So if we... I've got these two bricks, they're both the same type of bricks, and uh, this one's just come out of someone's garden, so the humidity is going to be a bit higher, so theoretically it's going to be a bit heavier than if it had been dried out for two weeks in a heated, heated environment. This one has come out of the rocket heater and is fully dried out. So we'll measure this one first, and let's just call that 2.8 .8 kilos, and that one is, let's call that 3.3 .3 kilos, so it's 500 grams. What I'm doing at the moment is I've stripped the top two courses off. I've kind of cleaned all this up. We had a lot of clan sand that just sort of fell in. So cleaned that all out. There wasn't much ash. Um, and I've recycled that into gunk to fill more bricks. You can put ash into a clay mortar mix. It actually makes it set faster. Um, I don't know how much it makes it crack. I've also just got rid of the chimney because it was just proving a bit of a pain in the ass to be honest. And I use this old bucket handle as a just, just fit it into the holes of the pop rivets where I took the shell off and now I can just swing this forwards and, and pull out the chimney if I drop the chimney down if I wanna. Those are the two courses. Oh, I thought this was quite interesting that even though this is from the top two courses, still that's still wet compared to that, which is kind of interesting. So it's clearly, it's not dried out yet. So it's not holding all its mass. I've also, I've just wetted this down again. I'll go again with a sponge before I lay the next course just to make sure it's saturated. Got some mortar here. That's my gunk for filling bricks, which is just old clay sand mix in that garbage that came out of there. This is, I've been filling these bricks, this might be quite hard to see in this dappled light. But I filled them the best I could, and then pressed down with a more, with the, with this little trowel here. Squeezed in what I could, tapped it down, I found that actually just like picking it up on the trowel and, and flicking it in, it was doing quite well. And then I misted it. And um, then I went over again with the trowel and got as much as I could and then I hosed at an angle, like sideways, and hose down, just sideways, and pushed all the mortar off the top. And it's revealed all the holes that haven't been filled in, so I'll go over again and I'll repeat that until it's full. 
So at the moment I'm just making a jig for the hole into the top of the heater so I can use it for cutting the concrete and also for cutting the granite top that goes in there because I really wanted to have a really really nice cut. So I'm measuring the circumference because that pipe isn't round all the way around. It's got little knobbly bits on it. It's got a, and um, I'm worried that it's it's not going to fit through the hole. So I'm using an equation which is radius equals circumference divided by pi times 2 to work out the radius of that. So at the moment I'm just checking for levels using this pipe level. It's a special right angle level that you can use on square pipes and round pipes to check two sides at once. It's the only tool you can really use to to do that with a, a normal straight, uh, a normal spirit level, excuse me. Can't really do angles on, can't really do level on pipes like that. So at the moment I am just drawing out that circle and I'm making a, a circle jig for my little router here using just a scrap bit of wood. You just screw it onto the bottom of your router uh, drill a hole for the um, where the center of the circle is and and then go for it really that's that's about it there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to make jigs for routers Now that's cut, I'm just going to check to, that the pipe goes in and it does. That lines up on the front two edges so I know it's in the right spot. There's a marking on the piece of wood there and that joins on the corner on the right hand side. Actually it's to the left of the screen. See far left, far right, that's it. All good, it goes in. We can move on and use that as a jig for stone. Here I'm just measuring up these new concrete pavers that are going on the top. I changed out from the clay. As you can see, I'm using the super accurate measuring tool to make sure that the edges all line up and therefore my circle is going to be in the right place. Now, I'm probably going to get some flack for not using my angle grinder with the guide on it, but to be honest, with a small angle grinder like this, I threw the guide off the day I bought it. stops you from being able to do most of the jobs that you actually need to do. I've done my 10,000 hours with an angle grinder and I've only got one injury to show for it which was pretty early on but using a guard as well before I ditched the guard because I couldn't see what I was doing. Now I'm just cutting the majority of the material out by cross hatching so I can get the edge of the blade into the, the shape of the circle and then literally just make it turn it flat and just start scraping off the edge going using an up and down motion and until I got a, a pretty good circle it took a really long time to do this and I did it again in granite I actually had ordered a, a bearing stone radar but it wasn't deep enough to do this job. This is 40 mil thick and the deepest it could cut was about 38. And after I used it later I, it took me so long I'm glad I didn't do it. There you go, it fits, woohoo! Well no it didn't, sorry. Woo! <laughs> then it fitted. That's just cutting the edge off piece of concrete. So this is cutting the ceramic fiberboard. It's super super easy to cut. It's like cutting polystyrene. Uh, I like a straight edge. Uh, I like clean cut so I find that the jigsaw is probably the least offensive tool to use. It doesn't create as much dust as things like circular saws, table saws, 
etc. You can even cut this with a knife if you want. So this is now cutting the granite for the top. It was a bit it was a bit scary because it's such an expensive piece of stone and I only really had one piece that would really nicely fit up there. So firstly I'm checking my depth and just sort of scoring, not trying to go all the way through, then just readjusting my blade depth and just going further and further down until it's got a clean cut. So here I am again cutting the granite, so I'm cutting the circle out now for the flue pipe. Same process as with the concrete, however, what I did notice that using this angle grinder you tend to get blow out on the bottom, which means sort of chipping. So you, you need to start on your good side and work towards your rough side rather than the reverse. Um, I, yeah, I, there was a few blowouts on the concrete, but it was no no drama because that's that's going to be covered. But it is important on this. I did a pretty good job considering this is what I this is all I did. It took me a best part of an hour of this to do this one hole. So I'm just finishing up making mortar so I can put on the, the top section of the bell. Now I ran out of memory card here on my GoPro on my head so I had to download all the footage and I, and I really just wanted to continue so I didn't want to stop and wait for a film. Maybe I could buy some more memory cards or something in the future. But I did record the rest with stop motion which I'll tack on to the end of this really. Thanks for watching and you know, if you're interested in having a, a workshop or building a rocket mass heater, whether privately or, or through a workshop, please get in touch and we can talk. So this is the day after the workshop or a couple of days after the workshop. I stripped back all the, the bricks that we just sort of roughly put together just to do the test fire and clean all those bricks up and refill all the holes and then reuse all the cob and then build it up again um, to the height it was uh, when we just slipped the bricks in. Putting on the top now, putting it on and then taking away, taking away to cut it. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is pretty much when it broke. I think you'll see it's in a few pieces in a minute. And I did try to glue glue back together. There you go, it's in bits now. I, I tried to glue it back together, but it was just it was so destroyed. I had to give up and cut a new sheet, unfortunately.
Well, me and Michelle decided after trying it out for a while that we wanted we wanted to increase the height of the bell so we could lean against it, like I said before. So, and I, and I wasn't happy with the two plus brick, so I stripped those out and started building the whole thing up again. And I think I was up till midnight, or maybe even later one night, just just getting those chords done. Sort of a bit of a pain, like I was almost at the finish line to, and then to have to, to rebuild and do again, but it's, it's well worth doing. Now it's so much better. Now this is the bit with the template and putting on the top. I wanted to be super careful when I put this granite top on so I decided to cut it in situ so I could get it on with a decent amount of overhang and then cut it afterwards because I um, had one shot of it really so wanted to get it right. Um, I've taken off the, the top covers now so that I can build up the secondary wall on the on our right hand side of the bell so I have to come build a bridge across this little section up there so what I'm doing now I'm building a double bridge and then laying a brick cross all the way up This is me starting to do my render or plaster coat. It's a mix of sand and clay and just a bit of dead banner grass, which is a subtropical grass. And because it's winter here, it tends to die off. So there's lots of dead leaves lying around.
nearly finished now. My friend Marty is just helping me to put the sheet of granite on because it weighed literally a ton. And then um, the next day I did the cover for the, the, the wood feed, which was was a pretty tough job actually. There was a lot of Oh, this is this is just some final trimming now the render coat's done trimmed it to size before I, yeah then then put the cover on there and um, sanded it gotta say that you've really got to get a really clean cut in the first place before you start sanding granite because it's just so hard to get cut marks out that uh, I I felt like stopping and actually have redoing a couple of the cuts um, but I just persevered and it works remarkably. You've got about 10 or 15 uh, grades of sandpaper, or it's a special kind of sandpaper for stone. And you just got to work through each one until you buff it up to that you know, kitchen kind of polished finish. Just tidying up and that's it. It's done. <laughs>